Hey, this is Attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about should you get a P.O. box, a UPS store box, or a virtual mailbox service for the mailing address for your small business or online business. If you're starting a small business, especially a business that is online, you may not be wanting to use your home address for your business, either because you're not allowed to, because you want privacy, or maybe you're a nomad and you're traveling around. So what kind of an address should you get? Now, let's start with the pros and cons of a P.O. box. So a P.O. box is that mailbox you can have at the post office, P.O. post office. So it is the cheapest way to get a mailing address. The small little P.O. boxes are very, very inexpensive. Now there are different prices depending upon what zip code it is and also obviously depending upon the size. How P.O. boxes work is it's, you know, total old school. You have to go there in person to get a key. You can sign up for it online usually, but you have to go there in person to get a key and there's a literal key. Occasionally they have ones that have like a little code that you turn, <laughs> like little dials, but you're still gonna have to go there in person to get that. You have to go there in person to pick up your mail. The post office will scan the front of your mail, at least most of your mail. So you can tell what mail is in that mailbox and you can set up your account that way. By the way, this is true even if you get mail in an apartment or a house. I have all my mail scanned so I know what mail is coming. They're not gonna open the mail for you. So that only helps you a little bit. You have to go there in person to pick it up. Now, generally speaking, it's going to be a PO box. It'll be obvious it's a PO box. While some mailboxes, some post offices will actually give you a street address so you can get UPS, FedEx, all that stuff delivered there, which is great. It's still in a database of PO boxes. So anyone who's like part of a government agency can look up in that database that this is a PO box. So you can't use it as a physical location address usually because they can look that up. And so post office boxes are wonderful if you're local, so you can go to the PO box and pick up your mail. They're really great if you need to keep things super cheap. So let's go look at the next option, which is a UPS store mailbox. And this is also something I've had. I've had a all three of these. I've had PO boxes, UPS store mailboxes, and I've had virtual mailboxes. UPS store is another kind of old school system where you go there in person to pick up your mail and you have a key. Now, the one of the neat things about a UPS store mailbox is that usually you have 24 hour access to your mailboxes. Post offices, you might have 24 hour access, you might not. Before the pandemic, a lot of them you did. After the pandemic, a lot of them you don't. But even before the pandemic, some of them you didn't. A UPS store, usually, not always, usually you get actually a key to this area where the, all the mailboxes are and you can go in and get your mail. Now you can't get your packages that way necessarily. Sometimes they'll have larger boxes and if you have a box that fits in one of those larger boxes, they'll give you a key and then you can open that up to get your package. But sometimes your package won't fit in that or they don't have any boxes like that. So you have to go there during the day when they're there. Also, if your mailbox fills up too much, and this is true of a PO box as well, then you have to go there when they're open so they can give you the big pile of mail and they're probably gonna be a little bit pissy about it. UPS store mailboxes I've found tend to be the highest price of all these three options, but it very much depends upon location. Every UPS store is gonna have different prices. One really neat thing about a UPS store is that they can accept all kinds of stuff. I've had flowers delivered and cookies delivered and messenger service things. They can accept many, many things at a UPS store that a post office box won't work for and a virtual mailbox won't work for. They don't scan stuff or let you know what's there. Now, sometimes you might be able to pay for something where they tell you if something has arrived, but they're not opening up all your mail and scanning them so you can read them. You also don't have to pay to pick extra to pick up your stuff. And this is true of both a post office box as well as UPS store box. Since the whole thing is in person, that's like the idea of it, you going there in person to pick up your stuff doesn't cost anything extra. You just have to go when it's open and you have access. Another thing that's great about UPS stores is they have other things there, right? So you can ship things, you can buy stamps, obviously you can do it at the post office, but you can also, they have notary services and they have a bunch of other business services there, printing and faxing, which I occasionally still do have to fax things, uh, even in this day and age. So 
if you need those other business services, that can be a good option for you. The third option, which is what I currently use for all of my businesses is a virtual mailbox. So what is a virtual mailbox service? There's a number of different companies and I will be doing reviews of these companies as well, such as Anytime Mailbox and Earth Class Mail and some other ones, I mean, there's a huge list of them, as well as services like um, ink file and things where you may use them for to form a corporation. They also sometimes have a virtual mailbox service as an add-on. How virtual mailbox service works is there's no in-person usually. And I say usually because I'll talk about it in a minute. There's usually no in-person at all. You have this address that, that probably is a building somewhere where that address is, where there's a mailbox for you, but there's no like physical mailbox that someone can actually deliver stuff to. It's all completely virtual. They scan all of your mail, they scan the outside, and then you can tell them to open it up and scan the inside. You can tell them which things you want them to shred, recycle, throw away, and you can have them forward certain pieces of, of mail to you. Now, how much it costs is just all over the place. It's gonna be based on not the size of the box, but how many mail pieces you get per month. And then if you go over that number, then they charge you per piece of mail. They may charge you for scanning. They may not charge you for scanning, or maybe it's unlimited scanning or only a certain amount per month. They may charge you for shredding. They may not charge you for shredding. They may charge you also for the mail that they're holding. So for example, with one of the mail services I'm using right now, when I get a piece of mail, they scan the outside and then they're holding it. And I get a certain amount of time that it doesn't cost me any additional money for them to hold that mail for me. I can't remember how what it is. It might be like a month, you know, something like that for uh, envelopes. But if I'm getting boxes, it's much sooner. And then I tell them whether or not I want them to open it and then they scan it if I tell them to do so, or if I want them to just shred it, throw it away or recycle it, or I want them to forward it. Now, there are some things I just have them scan because I don't have a privacy issue with it. I just wanna know what it is. But there are some things that I just have them forward to me because I don't want them opening that piece of mail. Occasionally services actually have check depositing things where they will open up the mail and deposit checks for you at your bank. but. I don't see those services as much anymore. And also, I mean, how many people are getting checks on mail, right? Now, if you get a box, they, they typically will only hold that with no extra cost for a much shorter period of time. Sometimes it's 30 days, but sometimes it's like five days and sometimes like one day. It can be based on how big the box is because you think about it, they gotta store all these boxes, right? And so if it's a huge giant box, it might be a shorter amount of time. One of the wonderful things about these virtual mailbox services is you don't have to ever go in person. It's great. You never need to go there in person. They're gonna scan all of your mail on the outside and then you can tell them if you want them to open it or forward it to you. This is the best thing in my opinion about these services. They also, in theory, are the, are the middle price where the UPS store places are more and the PO box are less. But it really depends on how much mail you get and how you're using it. Do you have them scan everything and open it up? How often do you have them forward stuff to you? Because whenever you're doing that, it costs more money for those additional things. Also, if you do need to pick up something in person and they allow that, they usually charge you for that. So for example, I'm planning to use a virtual mailbox service for my personal mail because I'm going to be uh, traveling full time. And for the one that I probably am gonna select, I'm doing it using a service that actually does have a local aspect to it. But they're gonna charge me, I think it's like a $2 for me to go there and pick up stuff in person. Now the, you get one per month where you don't have to pay the money. But the issue is, is like, what if you order something off Etsy and you want that to be delivered? Now, if it's something from Amazon, you can have it delivered to well, those Amazon lockers. But if you order something from Etsy or some small business or just somewhere else, then, and that doesn't have an in-person store that you can pick it up at. Like if you order something from Old Navy or whatever, you can, or Home Depot or Walmart, you can pick it up at that store. But if you order something that doesn't at a place that doesn't have a store or doesn't have a store around you, you need it delivered somewhere. And so a lot of these places will charge you, sometimes I've seen $5 to go there and pick up your box that's yours. I personally find that super, super annoying and ridiculous, but that's just how these businesses work. So virtual mailboxes and UPS store mailboxes, they may or may not look like a real address. So you really have to look at the address itself. So for example, with virtual mailboxes, I've seen them be like, you know, a number, the street name, a unit number, and then another number that's your box. Well, that's a really long address and it actually can be hard to get mail there. Sometimes it's too long for you to even type into a form and it doesn't look like a real address. However, there's other ones where it's just 
you know, the number for the street number, the street name, and then it just has your unit unit number, your suite number, that is your box. So you really wanna look at the exact address that you're getting to make sure it's a good fit. Another thing is you have to look at the specific virtual mailbox service to see if where their address is makes sense for you. Sometimes they only have addresses in the capital of that state, in Sacramento, California, for example. Sometimes they only have addresses in one place, it's in Oregon. Well, and that's not helpful for you. You're in California, you don't wanna look like you have an address in Oregon, that's just adding weirdness. You may want an address in your own city or in specific places. Maybe you want an address that's New York or San Francisco or LA. Maybe you want something that is close to where your actual location is. So you have to look at the addresses to see if they're good fit for you. Fundamentally, with these different options, there's no right answer. It really depends on how you're going to use it. If you need the most cheap thing, and you're okay with picking up in person, PO Box is the way to go. If you need to be able to get more services in you're okay with in person and you need to get boxes delivered and you do shipping and, and things like that, a UPS store may make a lot of sense. If you need it to be virtual, completely online, because you're traveling full time, because you need to want an address that is in some different city than where you actually are located, then probably one of these virtual mailbox services is going to make sense. And as I've said, I've used all three of these different options and now I go with the virtual mailbox services and that is because I don't wanna to have to go in person. If I have to go in person, I'm never gonna to remember to go and I forget to pick up my mail. But if I have a virtual mailbox service, they send me an email, letting me know that I have mail and I log in and I get my mail. So it works the best for me personally. I also don't get that much mail. So going in person to pick up mail doesn't even make sense because I might get one piece of mail a week. That's just not a very efficient <laughs> way to do business. That may not be true for you. Maybe you're getting a lot of mail. Maybe you send out a lot of mail and a UPS store box or a PO box is going to make more sense for you. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this. And if you have more questions, you'd like to connect further, you can sign up for the Patreon or the free Discord. Links are below. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.